Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics. Our fishing adventure this week kicks off right here in the office at Tackle Tactics HQ. We've had a lot of rain and the wind's blowing outside, but we still want to get out there and catch ourselves a fish. So this week we're on Google Maps and we're looking to explore one of our local rivers to catch bass. So Google Maps is a great way to find spots to fish when you're exploring new country. We've got our river system on the map here and we're looking for access points to the river, be it parks, causeways, weirs, anywhere that we can get in to that water and find ourselves a few bass. So stay tuned, backwater bassing, here we go. All right, before we hit the river, we need to grab our gear for the adventure. So TT sling bag, and we'll keep it nice and light. In the front compartment here, we've got a few Z-Man plastics, including our go-to 2.5 inch slim swims. In the middle here, we've got our leader, braid scissors, and a few other bits and pieces. And with my water bottle in the back here, I've got a TT tray loaded with gear. So not a lot of gear, we're just gonna be walking so we don't wanna be carrying everything with us. I've got a selection of jig heads to suit those slim swims and other plastics, a couple of TT Vortex spinner baits, some spin tricks, a few blades, just some bits and pieces that cover our bass from really shallow water into a few of those deeper holes in the river, and we're ready to go, get out there and hit the water. Fish on. Alright, so we've hit our first location, we're here, it's a causeway that's giving us access to this beautiful creek here. We've got the sound of running water, some amazing vegetation to explore, and we're going to pick some pockets and get ourselves a couple of bass. Yep, there we go. Oh, beautiful. Absolute magic country, picking out these snags and, and ledges. And we've got our first bass of the morning. So a dozen casts or so in. Light, light gear we're fishing. Not gonna be giant fish up in these creeks, but they're beautiful fish. Picking tight country with light gear. All right, there we go. There's our first fish of the session pickpocketing these tiny backwater suburban creeks. That guy had a bit of a rattle on it, followed it, and then nailed it. We'll get that lure out, let him go, and we'll talk a bit about the gear that we're using to chase these bass up in this skinny water. That fish that we just landed came from over on the other bank here. Basically, we're looking for key structure against that bank. So whether it's overhanging vegetation, logs that are coming out from the bank, or a little bit deeper ledges and pockets that we can cast into, you really got to get that, that lure right in amongst that structure to catch the fish. Across the creek here seems a bit deeper, and then we've got a big ledge on this side. So we've actually got a big lay down log that the bank's built up behind it and given us a steep edge here. So there's a chance there might be a bass holding right against this ledge as well. So we're gonna put a few more casts in. We caught that fish here. So we'll just keep trying and see if there's a few more in the area. Right in on that edge under the vegetation, perfect. So basically we're fishing light spin gear is perfect for this type of fishing because we're throwing finesse presentations. So I'm fishing a one to three kilo, seven foot red belly, and it's a two piece. The two piece in this rod is beautiful. They're a 30 ton Toro carbon rod, Fuji guides, nice and light and responsive. And that one to three kilo is perfect for this bass fishing that we're doing. If you're up in heavier country, up in the gorge country and stuff where there's a lot of bigger bass, you might want to up your gear. But for this creek session stuff, we're using one to three kilo spin. And that two piece rod's pretty good if I need to pull it apart, if we do come across some heavy cover, I can pull it apart if I need to punch through the bush a bit and do a bit of bush bashing. Real wise, I've got a 1000 size Akuma Same RHD on there. So TT Red Belly Rod, Same RHD Reel, and the 1000 size is beautiful. We don't need to hold a lot of line, and we're only fishing light braid. So that's a Platypus Pulse X8, and I'm fishing six pound braid there. So nice light braid, and I'm fishing a 10 pound leader just because we are fishing structure. So we're fishing logs and rocks and edges and that sort of thing where we could get rubbed off 
and that leader will cop a bit of wear through the day as well. So I want to keep an eye on that leader and I'm fishing 10 pound platypus hard armor supple leader, which is a nice, strong, reliable leader. So that was pretty cool. Our first fish in the morning didn't take too long and we'll pick our way along a bit further. We'll talk a bit more about the gear we're using and also about the structure that we're fishing to find these fish. All right, so I'm just basically paralleling the ledge that you can probably see there in the water. So it's a, a tree that's fallen down at some point during the flooding and the embankment is built up behind it. So the, the soil's built up behind that log and it's created a ledge. There's probably a really nice undercut underneath there where the fish potentially could be laying. So in that case, we just want to cast up along the lay down and we just want to bring it out over the edge of the lay down and a fish might come up and whack it, you never know. All right, this is the prime little bit of water that we found here. Lots of overhanging vegetation, beautiful snags in the water, lots of little pockets where those bass can hold and ambush stuff that's being washed down with the flow. Be it surface things like bugs and that or aquatic animals and insects. So we'll pop a few casts right into these key bits of structure and see if we can find a fish. Yep, yep, there we go. Right in against that stick. As we said, lots of overhanging vegetation, sticks and things in the water as well. Beautiful little bass fired up. Awesome picking these pockets in the creek. You can see that jig spinner spinning probably on that presentation there on that lure. Oh, he's right in at the bank now. I'll swing him up. There we go, beautiful little creek bass. We're running a jig spinner, which is awesome. TT jig spinner gives you that flash and vibration that attracts the fish. Vibration in the water that they feel through their lateral line and also hear it. So they sense that vibration coming through there. We've got a 1 8 ounce TT Headlocks Finesse UV jig head. That gudgeon color, two and a half inch slim swims. Perfect little paddle tail and that gudgeon is a gudgeon. It's a beautiful representation of a fish that you might find swimming in these rivers and that jig spinner makes all the difference with that flash and vibration attracting the fish. Just a little guy, but it's pretty awesome when you're making those casts here into tight country and you get that strike and you've got to get that fish out of there before it wraps you up. So beautiful little fish, we'll get him back in the water and we'll keep trekking along. We've had a lot of rain lately. The, there's a lot of brown water out in the salt. So this is a really good option to get up here and fish the freshwater creeks. Uh, it's also very windy today, so you, you can't really feel it here because we're down in the creek, but it is blowing a gale up there in the trees. And we've had some water through here lately with the rain. You can probably see this log jam up behind me here. So there's debris right up in the trees. So that water been, would have been ripping through here. And being summertime, those bass will push upstream with that flowing water. They'll, they'll work their way from eddy and pocket all the way right up into this shallow stuff. So if you've got some local bass creeks, Post rain is a great time to get up there. The water's just starting to clear up here, but there's still flow. And that helps us to find the fish because they'll be holding on obvious structure out of the flow, ready to ambush our lures. Fish on. This is a cool little pool that we've come to now. These river sand banks allow us to get out into the middle of the creek and that allows us to access the whole river here rather than pickpocketing from those tight edges. So it's another option that you've got and we'll come out on this bank here and then fan our casts across this pool to see if we can find ourselves a bass. We don't need to throw a ton of casts. We've got a jig spinner on there with that flash and vibration designed to attract the fish. So it's just a matter of fanning that, half a dozen casts here, keep moving, running and gunning, picking those pockets and picking those pools. Awesome bit of timber just there. Oh, that's prime. Yep, beautiful. That was just absolutely perfect. There's a, a beautiful little deeper corner. We've got some overhanging reeds 
and we've got some logs poking out there as well and a bit of rock. This is his uh, little powerhouse, this guy. So cool on the light gear, in the flowing water. Little pocket rocket, but right where he should have been sitting, that was so cool, right on that lay down timber. We got rocks, we got reeds, we've got all the cool stuff that these guys like to hide in. That is really cool, what an epic little fish. So we'll take him off and I'll talk you through what I think is one of the coolest, gotta watch those spikes on those guys. <laughs> coolest accessories that you can use when you're fishing, especially in the fresh water, and that's the jig spinner. Okay, so the jig spinner is one of the coolest additions that you can use when you're fishing soft plastics. Awesome in the fresh water. Bass, golden perch, Saratoga, all those species, sooty grunter, love that bit of flash and vibration. So the jig spinner basically consists of like a wire coat hanger frame, stainless steel, with a blade attached here. And that blade spins in the water, creating that flash and vibration to attract fish to the lure and trigger those strikes. So those blades are available in a rounder Colorado shape like this guy, in a gold and also in a nickel, which is silver, and also a willow, which is a thinner blade. So this thicker blade creates, the rounder blade creates a bit more thump in the water and runs a bit higher in the water. The willow is a, a more aggressive blade. It run, it'll spin faster and deep, run deeper. So you can just switch it up as you need to, but I like the gold blade generally, especially if the water's a little bit dirty. And basically we just clip, there's a clip section here. So we clip it onto our jig head. Our jig head sits at the bottom of the coat hanger. Our blade sits at the top. And we tie to this, cent this center point here. So that's the main thing. You tie onto that center point and that gets your lure running perfectly down the bottom and your blade spinning up there to attract those fish and trigger those strikes. Oh. Yep. <laughs> oh, that was so cool. That fish, on the previous cast, I miss, missed that fish. That was a terrible cast. I hit the top of the tree here. It dropped straight down to where I had the previous hit. And this fish just absolutely drilled it. So how amazing is this? We're just walking down the creek now. It's the vegetation's a bit denser on the edges. So we've just basically got in the creek. We're on river sand and rock. And we're just walking right down the middle of the creek. being really quiet, try not to stir up too much bottom or stir up too much fish. And we're just walking the creek. Drop that in our rod holder and we'll have a look at this guy. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's a nice chunky little bass. Oh, it just spat out a prawn. Like a freshwater prawn, a shrimp. How's that? That's a beautiful little creek bass. So you can see here, we're sling bagging it up today. We've got our rod dropped in our rod holder there. Everything we need's with us in this bag, nice and comfortable for fishing. And it allows us, Well, there's another prawn. Check out the prawns he spat out. That's bizarre. Shrimp, freshwater shrimp. So that's, um, yeah, easy does it. Sling bag, bit of basic gear, light rod, and we're in the creek trekking. And that's a really nice bass. Beautiful, chunky little creek bass. They're in beautiful condition. Oh yeah, that was a solid take. That was a beautiful take. So that time I'm fishing right down the middle of the, the creek. You've got to remember that these fish love structure and that structure is not necessarily on the edges. So a lot of the time it is, we're fishing undercut vegetation, timber, rocks, that sort of thing. But a lot of the time, the fish can be holding on boulders and logs and that in the middle of the creek as well. So when you're walking down the creek or trekking the edges, it's definitely worth a few casts into the middle of the creek as well. And that's another beautiful, chunky creek bass. Have a look at that guy. That's a stunning fish. Oh, he's away. Quick release. We might get another one in this pool yet. It's a pretty good looking pool. Good water depth just above our knees and working into some nice structure on the edges. Good times. Yep. Oh yeah, that was another screamer out in the middle. Went over to that left hand side a little bit more. There's gotta be some good structure in the water there because that was just another cracker take. Awesome fun. Red belly one to three kilo two piece, I love it. I love the two piece because I can just, it, it stores easy, it travels easy. You know, if I need to bush bash back out of here, I can just pull into two bits. I've got an Akuma rod wrap 
rod strap. Oh, he's heading for cover. I've got an Akuma rod strap in my bag so I can strap the two pieces together. He's really keen to get up under this edge. <laughs> Bit of fancy rod work. And that's another beautiful fish. That's stunning. They are loving it. That jig spinner with the flash and vibration, that really fires them up. There we go, another beautiful creek fish. Have a look at the colors on that fish and he's in really good condition, super healthy fish. Real fat fish. Yep, oh! Super shallow water. Yep, oh yeah, drilled it. <laughs> How good is it? This is amazing, he's in flow there. He's got me in a bit of flow, but this is just insane. Like the, we're, we're just in the back creeks of the suburbs, fishing in, it's not even knee deep water there. We've got beautiful flow, magic surroundings. We're out of the wind and catching bass. Aussie bass right up in the shallow water. Look at that guy, that's pretty amazing out of the water that we're in. You wouldn't think you'd get a fish like that in such shallow water runs, but he just smashed that. We've changed the color up on that Slim Swims to a Houdini color, but that's a, a definitely a favorite presentation, little bait fish presentation, fresh or salt, you've got to get some Slim Swims in your kit because fish love a really, really lively paddle tail design and that jig spinner giving us that flash and vibration in the flow. Have a look at that, that's awesome. So there you go, folks. We've had a cracker session just up in the little suburban creeks. Make sure you check out Google Maps and check out your local area. Those floodwaters have pushed these fish right up in the system. And we've had great fun today on light gear, chasing a few Australian bass. Fish on.